Hello, everyone. We're going to give everybody just a second to hop on and we'll get started. Thanks for joining us today. I think this is going to be a really useful um, webinar for you guys today. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Laura Dietrich and I'm the uh, project coordinator for NWA Gives. And Today on this webinar um, brought to you by Mighty Cause, uh, we will be discussing a couple of key things, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which if you've never utilized that strategy, this is the year to do it. So we're gonna help you get familiar with that, as well as communication tips, when, what to email, and some strategies um, on how to communicate with your donors before the big campaign day, but just really also good tips for uh, year round. Um, and then we're gonna follow that with resources and support. And then we're gonna uh, open it up for any kinds of, any questions that you might have. So if you think of anything during the presentation, you're welcome to put it in the chat box at the bottom, um, but we will also have a time for questions and answers at the end. Um, so I think at this time, I will pass it on to Sarah Wink. She is uh, my partner in crime at Mighty Cause, and um, she will be presenting the webinar. Awesome, thanks, Laura. Uh, super excited to be here with you all. Um, like Laura said, my name is Sarah, and I am a project manager with Mighty Cause. So we are the platform provider for the awesome event NWA Gives. Um, we're excited to be here with you all again, um, and I'll be working through some peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tips with you all. Um, all right, so to get into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, uh, basically kind of a big overview why you should even consider using peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, and we'll talk more about like what it is and different ways you can use it. But overall, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a really key way for you to uh, engage your supporters or your ambassadors, as we call them. Um, so these are anybody in your organization's inner circle, uh, any of your supporters, maybe family members, people who really care about the work that you're doing. Um, and they want to support you by you know, spreading the word about your organization. So basically, they would create their own page, they would solicit donations, they would be able to reach further than you probably can, just because their network isn't necessarily the same network that you've been talking to. Um, so you can see this darling little infographic, These, this is you and it's your current donor uh, database pretty much, and then we have you and you have your peer to peer fundraisers your supporters and they're each also collecting donations. So overall you're going to be able to raise more funds with peer to peer fundraising. Um, it's also a cool unique way to kind of amplify the traditional outreach that you use so whether that's you know cold calling your donors or sending postcards, this is a really unique way that you can offer to your supporters as a way that they can help support you. Uh, raise more money during NWA gives. Um, it's also a really great way for uh, you know your supporters to share their impact story. So what it is that you do and why you, they love you so much. Why are they supporting you in the first place? Um, people love to hear from others. Uh, you know referrals are a great way for people to both you know buy things and also find things that they care about that they can connect on. Um, so using and engaging your ambassadors and having them tell their stories uh, is going to really help you in the long run raise more money during this year's event. Um, so how to use peer to peer fundraising so basically what we were talking about your ambassadors, these are people who are you know supporters of your organization, most likely you know board members would be great peer to peer fundraisers for you. Um, if you have volunteers at your organization, if you have, you know, a key group of staff members, um, alumni or anybody like if you're, you know, more of an education or a school center, um, pretty much just thinking about who in your donor database maybe could also be a peer to peer fundraiser and not everyone is going to be probably someone you want to reach out to for peer to peer fundraising. But you probably, you know, have a, a key idea of people who would, one, be interested in doing this. Maybe they are more social. Maybe they have a strong network, like your board members are going to have a strong network. Um, so, you know, feeling it out, letting people know. 
Um, you can also send out kind of a general email, letting your supporters know that peer to peer fundraising is an option. Um, some, you know, people who don't have money to give this year or they're giving less this year, depending on their situation, this is a unique way for them to be involved that's not necessarily uh, in a way that's just donating money. So they're donating time, they're reaching out and connecting with their friends and family, um, and they're, you know, offering support in a, a non totally monetarily way, monetary way. Um, so different ways to use peer to peer fundraising. Um, so basically providing directions, like I said, sending an email, sending them some resources or tips, suggestions on your end of how to make a great peer to peer fundraiser. Mighty Cause has um, resources that you can share directly in an email, you can link tips, you can say here's how to customize your page. Um, and basically just encouraging them to tell their story about why they care about your organization from their point of view. Um, so over here, you can see that we have the fundraise button, uh, and this is where uh, someone will go to fundraise for you. So when they're ready to make a fundraiser, they can click fundraise and they'll be prompted. You can see this kind of walkthrough. It says create a fundraiser, get started, and then build your fundraiser. Um, we'll get into in a minute what the template looks like, uh, but you do have an option to kind of... Uh, streamline things for them and kind of pre-fill some sections of a fundraising page for them so that they uh, have your logo maybe they have a goal set um, there's a lot of ways you can make peer-to-peer -peer fundraising particularly easy for people especially if they've never done it before um, so when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we have a couple different options available to you. So we have the individual fundraisers, which are the most utilized, I would say. Um, these are created by an individual supporter. Um, so you can kind of see like this example. This is Lisa's fundraiser. It's a nonprofit fundraiser supporting Animal Humane Society. Um, they are able to make a goal for themselves. Uh, you can set the goal in the template for them. If you want everyone to reach, say, a $500, you feel like that's manageable. Um, of course, they can also go in and uh, adjust anything that you add. So if they're not set to the goal that you make in the template. They can totally customize all parts of their page. Um, so they are going to create this page, personalize it, you can add a photo, they can add their little uh, story about why they like you, why they should have supporters donate to you. Um, and then they will share their page link with their network. So they'll copy the URL on their page and they will send it in emails or text messages or however they want to reach out to their family and friends and network. Uh, to share their page. So they can add the link to Facebook, stuff like that. So they'll be soliciting donations on this page. Uh, donors will come and click donate here. Um, and all of the donations made to these peer-to-peer uh, -peer individual fundraisers are all going to be sent directly to your organization's page. So it's really cool. It's kind of like having a bunch of different arms out there, all kind of, you know, grabbing different donations and all pulling them into the same bucket, which is your organization page. Um, so like I said, uh, individual fundraisers are awesome. They're a really great way to kind of um, encourage more community within your organization. It's a cool way for people to, you know, provide their time as a resource to you and their network as a resource to you. Uh, so definitely consider utilizing it. It's, it's pretty, it's really easy to set up um, and it's a lot of fun. So, I mean, we all know how there's different donors for every organization and you definitely are going to have some donors who love this option. So definitely connect with them and let them know uh, how to set up a page. Um, so another option outside of individual fundraisers are team fundraisers, which are actually made up of individual fundraiser pages. So um, kind of an idea of how you could use a team fundraiser if you have like your board of nonprofit, like your um, board members, they could all have individual fundraiser pages. And then those can be housed underneath a team. So the team would be the board of your nonprofit. Um, and then it's fun because team fundraisers offer some competition. There's a leaderboard, there's a bunch of people fundraising together towards one overall goal. So each of their pages might have a different goal, but the overall goal would be uh, whatever you set for the team, whatever the team leader, you know, uh, basically sets for the group. 
um, and you can keep them engaged, you can send emails. Um, and it's just a really good way to keep, uh, you know, your ambassadors, your supporters engaged in a very unique, fun way during NWA gives. Um, so when you are creating your uh, fundraisers and you're keeping track of all your peer to peer campaigns, you're going to want to head to your dashboard. Um, your campaigns, which is found under the fundraising tools, is going to itemize and list out all of the peer to peer campaigns that people have created for you and that you've created for yourself. So you can see kind of small in the screenshot, but it'll show you who the owner of the peer to peer campaign is, whether it's one of the admins on your account um, or if it's, you know, uh, an outside kind of peer to peer uh, individual. Um, you can keep track of all of the progress. You can um, also create a template. If you go under fundraising tools at the very bottom, I happen to cut it off, but right under here it says um, uh, like a fundraising template. So that's where you go to create. You can also see it right here. This is where you go to kind of pre-fill a bunch of content to each of these pages so that um, it's a little less maybe daunting for individuals when they click, yeah, let's do it. Uh, they don't have to start from scratch, so you can add, you know, the logo and uh, the goal like we were talking about. Um, but the campaigns is going to show you kind of full reporting. You can sort the campaign type by different uh, like team fundraisers versus individual fundraiser pages. You can see who created the page. Um, and you can also go and hide out of date campaigns. So if you have previously used peer to peer fundraising, uh, or maybe you didn't really know somebody previously used it and it's out of date and you don't want it to come up in the search this year for NWA Gives, you just go next to it. Um, there's three dots, you click it and you can just hide the out of date campaign. Um, so you can go and do a little kind of house cleaning prior to NWA Gives to make sure that all of the fundraisers that you want represented uh, this year are the ones that are current. Um, Okay, so we're going to move into communication strategy. Um, so pretty much what we're going to talk about is email strategy and some tips and suggestions, and then we're also going to visit um, social media strategy. Um, so lots of good stuff here. Uh, lots of suggestions. If you all have questions, you can definitely throw them my way. Um, but to start with, we're going to talk about email and kind of the overview. So we're going to go over your best practices. Um, we're going to talk specifically about how to, you know, create an email that hopefully somebody will read based on segmenting your audiences. Um, and then we're going to talk about what and when to post kind of some suggestions. And then we'll talk about how you can utilize your retention reports this year if you are a uh, um, if you've previously participated in the VOA Gives, you can use that resource. Um, so pretty much email best practices, what we see works um, is really what we all kind of look at typically in our own emails. So when you're crafting an email, the thing you want to kind of pay particular attention to is what you would want to receive if you were on the other end of this email. Um, sometimes when you're very close to an organization, you want to throw as much detail, as much information into these emails as possible. Um, and when you're receiving an email like that, like we can, you know, the receiver knows the passion, but sometimes they can get lost in the ask. So kind of really tailoring your messages, coming up with a strategy, what emails do you need to send, write them down on a piece of paper. Um, you need to send maybe five different emails and um, we'll talk about kind of a suggestion for those. But you want to like make sure that your message is tailored uh, to what you want to happen from the email. So whether that's a hey save the date, we're super excited, we have been registered, we are approved to participate in NWA Gives, we're super pumped, it's our first year, it's our second year, whatever the details might be. Um, so that one would be all about saving the date, mark your calendars type of thing. So keeping it short and sweet and to the point, um, having a descriptive subject line is going to be really helpful. Uh, subject lines can be hit or miss for people. I always find that being more direct and letting people know what the email about is about is going to get more opens rather than saying, you know, something more generic like, we're excited, take a peek, <laughs> you know, something like that. So letting them know exactly what it is will help them, uh, you know, trust you and know that they want to open your email because they see something that's interesting to them. 
Um, and then personalizing the email, which we'll talk about kind of in a minute with segmenting, uh, making sure just overall that your message is tailored to your audience. Um, and we'll get more into that in a second. Um, always include a direct call to action. So whatever that might be, the example with the save the date, mark your calendars, save your date, put it in your phone, uh, tell your friends, something like that. Um, and then, you know, when you're actually making your ask to your donors on the day of the event or early giving, the direct call to action would be something like donate now, uh, giving open today, like click to donate. So, you know, very direct ask is what you want them to do. Um, and always having kind of a bold button. Uh, hyperlinks are good, but people are less likely to click on hyperlinks. Um, they are more likely to click on a button. So if you are working in MailChimp or Constant Contact, typically there's templates, there's uh, you know preformatted kind of emails that you can drop in. Uh, and the bonus of working with those kind of email um, services is that they are preformatted for mobile. Uh, most people these days are opening their phones and they're clicking through their email and they're on all of their mobile devices. So you definitely want your emails to be mobile friendly. Um, when you're working at an organization, I think a lot of people are working from their desktops. So as you're building an email, make sure to send yourself a test. Um, make sure you open it on your mobile device, send it to your mom, your friend, your colleague so that they can test all of the buttons that you've included. Um, if you've included a link to donate, click that button. Make sure it goes to your link to donate and not a dead link. Um, a lot of work we all know goes into creating emails. So you definitely want all of your hard work to be successful. Uh, so definitely do that quality assurance test. Um, click the buttons, make sure the links work, make sure your wording, your text, short, sweet, um, and it makes sense. Um, so a little bit about kind of crafting the perfect email. Um, obviously there's no such thing as the perfect email, but you can try to get really close based on the group that you are sending it to. So sending, segmenting your emails basically means splitting up your email list. So you're going to determine the email groups that you're going to be sending to. So basically looking at the groups of people in your donor list who have things in common. So that could be anything like you know, donors who give once a year, every year during the NWA Gives campaign. That would be one group. They would get one particular probably type of messaging. Hey, NWA Gives is happening again. You gave to our campaign last year. Click here to donate again. Um, or maybe a, just a, another group is volunteers or your employees at your organization. Um, maybe it's your larger gift givers. If you have a large gift uh, donor base, um, or people who are more likely to give you matches, those people, that group of that audience would need different messaging than people who maybe give, you know, the minimum the $10 every year during the campaign. So thinking about the messages you want to send, the audience you're sending them to, uh, and kind of crafting that message in the strongest way to get what you need from that group of people. Um, so like we're talking about, if you have a, a, a group of, you know, donors who give in large amounts, maybe you've seen them in the past, they've donated to your organization in, you know, thousand dollar donations, perhaps that would also be a good email segmentation to break out specific, um, to try to see if this year they would be willing to give like a match. Um, but basically group A is going to get a version of an email group B. We'll get a slightly different version, group C, um, et cetera, pretty much. So uh, just tailoring, tailoring your message to the audience that is receiving it. Um, and then of course, updating your ask based on the segment. So we talked a little bit about this in the last side. The ask is what it's going to be all about in your nonprofit fundraising. Um, you know, knowing what you want from that group of people is gonna take you further. So uh, for these examples, um, for non-donors, say you have a segmented list of donors who have never given to you. Uh, maybe they signed up for your email at list, uh, but you just haven't seen any donor dollars come in through the door. Uh, don't mark them off. Uh, maybe your ask for that group of individuals will be for you know the minimum, uh, you know maybe a small amount, say ten dollars. 
um, recurring donors they give every year, they maybe give monthly, uh, maybe that group, you know, you would tailor your ask so that you're not asking for the minimum. Maybe you want to ask for a more moderate ask. Maybe you feel comfortable that this group of people would be probably more able to give $50. Um, and then when you're crafting your message, based on the ask, we always recommend that you kind of also explain what you can do with those funds. So what can you do with the minimum, you know, a small donation of $10? And you can do something, so let them know. Uh, what can you do with the $50 ask that you're asking for your moderate givers? Um, does that help buy food for the animals for, you know, a week? What does that look like? Uh, tying a kind of um, kind of the appeal and what it does for your organization together is going to have more uh, value for the donor when they receive the email. Um, and then, of course, my other example, if you are emailing volunteers and you're asking for them to donate to your campaign, their ask would look a little different. You want to make sure that they acknowledge that you are acknowledging the time that they've donated throughout the year uh, before just going in with the full on ask for money. Um, a wonderful tool available to you, um, and I see. Oh, okay, that was that. Um, okay, so a wonderful tool available to you on the NWA Gives site, if you have previously participated in NWA Gives, um, is a retention report. Um, so what is donor retention? Your donor retention is basically a measure of how many people uh, come back and have redonated to you since the last campaign. Um, so to access your donor retention report, you can head to your left hand dashboard and there is a button called reports and then you can click retention and this is what that kind of area looks like. Um, it allows you to sort by retained donors unretained donors or all um, and then you can select the time period, so you would select you know this year's uh, campaign and it would compare to the data of last year's. it would be able to say uh, you know. Maybe midday you want to pull the report, or even at the beginning of the day you want to pull the report because early giving has been happening. You want to see who hasn't given during early giving, um, and then download that list of emails and put it into you know your Mailchimp or your Constant Contact, and send out a email letting all of those people know, hey, you gave last year, uh, give again during this year's campaign, uh, donate now. <laughs> you know, very straightforward. Um, but it's a good idea to build into your email strategy and your plan during the event. Um, maybe you come to your retention report twice, uh, maybe once in the morning and then once with like, you know, a couple hours left in the campaign. Um, because with a couple hours left to go, you can definitely try to reach out to those who gave last year uh, and just encourage them, remind them, remind them what you were able to do with their funds last year uh, and just make a compelling ask for them. Um, as far as when and what to emails to send, I definitely think that uh, there is no perfect time to send an email and there's no magic formula for any of it. Uh, you probably kind of, you know, have become more familiar if you do have email campaigns, you know what donors are responding to, you know kind of when the sweet spot is to send emails. Um, if you don't, this is a great year for you to kind of test the waters, send out your emails and then pull the data and see what got the most opens, what got the most clicks at the end of the event? Uh, was a morning send more ideal than an afternoon send? Did you get more responses during early giving than you did on the day of the event? Uh, all of that data you can kind of use to your advantage in next year's campaign or even throughout the year. Um, all the emails that you send throughout the year, you're going to collect data on them. Uh, so hopefully when it comes time for a large campaign like NWA Gives, you can use that knowledge uh, to kind of create, uh, craft a very uh, informed um, email kind of campaign strategy. So on the right, this is pretty much, you know, typically like our bare minimum. You can definitely send more. Uh, I would be careful not to oversend. Sometimes donors can get donor fatigue because the asks can be so repetitive. So uh, look at a calendar, figure out what dates you want to send emails to your donors. Um, maybe it's, you know, once a week or every other week kind of during early giving, and then you want to do it multiple times during the day on the live event. 
Uh, but to save the date, super important, you can send that out now if you're registered, just let them know to save the date. Uh, they can start giving, you can say during early giving, um, or they can save the date literally for the day of the event, uh, which is to your advantage. You can, you know, win more uh, different prizes and power hours and stuff like that. Um, and then you want to send a note letting your supporters know about peer to peer fundraising, which we talked about earlier. Um, let them know this is how you can support us, uh, you know, with your time and your community and your family uh, by just reaching out to those that we don't have in our network. Um, and then you want to send an email during early giving, send an email definitely at the start of the giving day. And then, of course, use that retention report uh, and send an email to your pretty much anyone who hasn't given to you towards the end of the giving day for a final push. Um, during the giving event, you can download your donor report to make sure that you're not accidentally sending to people who maybe have already given. Um, it's not, you know, bad to resend and ask to somebody who has already given. A lot of donors are willing to give more than once, especially if they know that it can help you during a power hour or a prize hour. So look at the prizes on the NWA Give site, um, kind of plan your strategy around what prizes you're trying to win. And then also you can schedule those emails to coincide with the power hours and the prize hours. Um, if somebody gives, you know, during early giving, don't mark them off your list. Definitely still reach out. That would be a different segment for you, which we were talking about. That would be the segment that gave to you. And maybe you tailor the message a little bit differently during the campaign and say, hey, we know you gave during early giving. If you're able to, we're working to win this power hour. Uh, please donate here. Um, moving into social media, uh, there's a lot to be said about social media. I think we all are very familiar with it. Um, we are here to support you with social media tips, but again, there's no perfect solution to social media. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about what we suggest. So we'll talk about setting up an inter internal workflow how you can make it a smooth uh, kind of journey for you as you prepare for NWA Gives, some best practices, and again, just like email a couple of suggestions on when and what to post. Um, as for internal workflow tips, as you're getting ready for your social media part of your strategy and your campaign, we always suggest appointing a social media manager if you can. Um, not everyone has you know, the resources or the people um, so sometimes you might be your social media manager on your own. So basically, if you have a volunteer, if you have a board member, if you have somebody that you trust who you can kind of ask to help support you, um, even if that means just sitting down, you know, once a week to kind of come up with uh, a plan or posts or templates, all of that is very helpful. Um, so see what you can do, ask around um, and see if you can get someone to support you. Uh, if not, scheduling everything you can uh, in advance is going to be your best friend. <laughs> um, so as much as you can, social media, you can, you know, schedule things for Facebook, you can schedule, pre-schedule things for Instagram, uh, Twitter, whatever have you, whatever is your go-to kind of social media platform. Um, they've, you know, made it very easy for you to pre-schedule things. So. Uh, going onto Canva and creating templates um, and like kind of figuring out the stuff that you want to post and then creating that and then scheduling is going to be key. Um, meet regularly, post consistently. You're going to see more success with social media if you regularly show up. It is hard to get out there and it's hard to create posts. Um, and when you're not getting, you know, people to like your posts or to engage with your posts, it can be really incredibly frustrating. Uh, and I think sometimes organizations that aren't getting the feedback that they wish they would, they slow down on their posting, which actually does not do you a favor. Um, the more you show up, the more people are going to slowly see you engaging on a platform. They're going to come to check you out. And the more people who are clicking your post and clicking your stories on Instagram, uh, the lovely algorithm is going to tell them, hmm, okay, we see you clicking on this Animal Humane Society content. We're going to show you more of that. So the more people, the more you show up, the more people are going to see you, the more they're going to engage with you, the more, you know, that platform is going to push your content to them. Uh, so definitely start showing up. Now is the time, even if you have never used social media, 
uh, regularly before. Um, just start, you know, using the NWA gives hashtag uh, and stuff like that. And then, of course, if you have been using social media and you, you know, post pretty consistently, definitely review your analytics. You can get a lot of data from, you know, Instagram and Facebook. They tell you when your followers are most active. I'm not saying that's always going to make people engage with your content, but uh, you'll know kind of maybe uh, weekends are a really good time to post, but you don't work on weekends. So that's when we come back to pre-scheduling things. You can pre-schedule posts to hit on the weekends when your followers are more likely to engage with it. Uh, so best practices, post where your audience is, use your stories, feature um, thoughtful hashtags. You don't need to go crazy with your hashtags. Use you know thoughtful hashtags to try and find an audience that is specific to you. Uh, Pre-schedule content, aim for early engagement. Like I was saying, show up starting now. Um, you know, put out a post about save the date type of thing. Pretty much similar content that you're putting out in emails are also going to be easily kind of interchanged with social media. Um, and then of course, engage, encourage sharing and post engagement. So you can tell people to share this post with their friends. You can ask them questions. Uh, you know, what's something that they, uh, what's a reason why they're excited about, you know, supporting you during MWA Gives, something like that to try to get people to engage with your post. Um, as for what and when to send and uh, share to your socials, um, like I said, post when you uh, look at your analytics and see people are most active. Uh, we always recommend a save the date, early giving posts, um, and then the live event is going to be really exciting. You can do kind of off the cuff uh, stories, uh, a little less planned type of things. People love seeing content behind the scenes, so schedule that in. Um, if you have a match that goes live, uh, you'll want to make a post or an announcement. Um, most likely, you know your match is going to be scheduled on the live day, so that's something you can pre-schedule. You can go into the free Canva kind of design website, and you can uh, create a match template social media post. You can pre-schedule it, and that's one less thing to worry about during the live event. Um, and then, of course, prize announcements. If you win anything, you can share the excitement with your followers. And then uh, we always recommend like a final hour, one hour left of NWA Gives. Um, link in bio to make a donation to help us win a prize. Um, and then last but not least, closing the loop. Uh, just like it is important to thank your donors, it's important to thank your audience publicly and you know social media and email campaigns. Um, maybe you are used to doing phone calls. Uh, email is going to be really key because it's a quick, like immediate uh, next day type of thank you that you can send to people. Um, and so we always recommend as part of your email and your communication strategy is to start planning how you're going to close the loop so that the day after the event, you're not like scrambling, um, trying to get out and ask. I would say uh, sometimes just in general, when I look at the Mighty Cause support, um, kind of the tickets that come in to support, uh, and this is not specific to NWA gives, I would just say in general, we often see donors who wonder if the organization has received their gift. Um, Mighty Cause sends an automatic kind of receipt to them, uh, but you also wanna make sure to fill out your thank you form and kind of promptly thank them via email um, or a call or another creative way to let them know that their donation has been seen. Um, you know, some donors are totally fine not being thanked for a week. Other donors are panicking that they donated to the wrong page. Um, so just kind of having a close the loop strategy uh, very quickly after NWA gives is going to go a long way for your donors, making them feel seen um, and also thanking them, you know, on social media because they're all excited for you and they donated because they care. They want to know what prizes you've won. So there's a lot of excitement to share. Um, and I'm going to pass it back to Laura for resources and support, and then we'll get to questions. Thanks so much, Shara. Um, so resources and support. This is um, an area I feel that sometimes we don't utilize as, as much as we could. And there are some really great tips and information on the NWA Gives page, if you go to the resources tab and you choose the nonprofit toolkit, you can see 
so many uh, resources for you, uh, templates. There's um, webinar, our webinar from um, a couple of weeks ago will be on there. This webinar will be on there um, after today. Um, so you can find those things. Um, there's so much, there's so many great pieces of information um, that I would really encourage you to go and just take, take a tour of that nonprofit toolkit um, and see what um, resources might help you. Um, in addition to the toolkit that uh, Mighty Cause offers, NWA Gives actually has a resource library uh, which you can access from that nonprofit toolkit page. And it has past fundraising tips, past webinars that we've offered, um, step-by-step -step guide to getting started, all kinds of things that you could use um, immediately to get going, uh, especially if you're new and you're not sure where to, where to begin. That's a great, those are both great uh, tools. Um, don't forget that you can go to the uh, FAQ page and just kind of briefly read through those and you'll probably answer some questions that you didn't even know you had on, on that page. Um, and I think um, another, mo one of the other really important things uh, at the very bottom of that resource tab toolkit page, if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll find the Mighty Cause support team information. They are there to help you. Um, it comes with your registration. So no question is a bad question. Um, you, can, you can call and they will help you if you have a technical problem or if you're unsure how to put something on your page. Those, those people are there for you. So you can um, reach those people at, the, at their website at Support at Mighty Cause, as well as um, calling Monday through Friday, eight to four. Um, on the day of giving, and Sarah, you can tell me if I'm wrong about this. I believe that the support team is open for that for a longer period of time that day. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So it'll be 24 hour support. Yeah. So if there's any problem that you're having on the day of, they are going to be ready to help you so that we can get things taken care of so you can have a successful giving day. Um, there are a couple little, I was going to just say a couple other little things. If you don't know how to use Canva, um, this is kind of going back to what Sarah was saying, nonprofits can have a free account on Canva. You can build your an email, you can build a, a blog post, you can build an Instagram post or a Facebook post on uh, Canva, and it's very easy to use it. It's very user-friendly. Um, but nonprofits can use that for free. So I would encourage you, if you don't have a Canva account, to go and set that up because it will help you uh, make beautiful uh, marketing products that are very consistent. You can set up kind of a brand on there um, and you can post directly to your Instagram or your Facebook page straight from Canva. So I would really um, encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, also, I wanted to encourage you to check out the widgets and the text to give on um, the NWA Gives page. So you can actually send out text messages, uh, a, a text campaign, which will bring the, those supporters directly to our page and they can support you via their phone. Um, we didn't take advantage of that last year, but I think it's something, a tool that we really could use and could be a really uh, could make a big difference. Um, and on the widgets page, it helps you tie our NWA gives page directly uh, from your actual website. So you can have um, a link that goes directly to your organization page from your actual website. So check those two things out. Um, and last but not least, if you're really struggling and you don't know what to do next, I'm going to be available next Friday um, from 10 to 12. I'll be at the Jones Center in Springdale. Um, the Jones Center is offered to uh, let me use their Buddy Ray 
boardroom for a couple hours from 10 to 12. And I am just going to be there to help you if you need help getting your page set up or you're struggling with a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page, that's, I'm going to be there to help. So any questions that you have, I will be ready. And um, Sarah gave her a warning that if we needed help, we would call her if we needed extra help. So yeah, um, take advantage of that. I would love to, to talk to you and meet you and um, help in any way I can. So does anyone have any questions? 10 to 12, that's gonna be on Friday the 10th. Um, and if you go into the Jones Center, just let them know you're looking for the Betty Ray boardroom. Um, and that, and I'll just be in there waiting to chit chat. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, so if you haven't had a chance to look at the prizes that we are offering on our actual giving day, Sarah, they are on the page, correct? Yes, they're there okay. under rules and prizes. Yeah, so if you would go to the rules and prizes page, you'll see um, a breakdown of prizes that we're giving out. We have um, a donation from First Security Bank uh, of $12,000 that we'll be giving away during um, the day of giving. So some of those might be most donations every single hour or most money every single hour. You have to look at the different categories. One might be best, uh, most creative social media. We're going to give away a prize for that. One is, you know, the most dollars raised in the very last hour of the campaign. So you can go and check out that list of prizes and kind of build your strategy. If there's one that you think, okay, I really want to go for that one. Uh, if you're brand new, we even have a category for brand new organizations. You get to compete against each other for a prize. So um, even if you're new, you still have an opportunity to really um, add some money to your total. Does that answer your question? No problem. Anybody else have anything? Okay, I am going to assume that that's probably, um, that's probably it. I appreciate that you guys came today and you know you can always ask questions. If you think of something later, you can uh, reach me at info at nwagives.org. I am happy to answer any questions or help you in any way I can. My goal is to make you as successful as possible on this day. So. Um, let me know how I can help or let me know if you have any questions that you need answering. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Bye.